Okay, well, good morning. We're glad you're here this morning. We're going to look at Psalm 7 today. Uh, you know, if you get a Bible reading chart, we have them up on the uh, on the table in the back there. You get through the Bible in a year. But we're, we're reading about David. Uh, today we had uh, chapters 22 of 1 Samuel, 22, 23, and 24. And, and not, now we see David, uh, uh, Saul is trying to kill him. Saul was the first king uh, in Israel. The, the people desired uh, the people desired a king. They were supposed to just follow the Lord. Uh, the, the Lord had judges there in Israel, and they demanded a king because they were worldly-minded. And, of course, as Leonard Ravenhill, we just watched that sermon, like uh, Leonard Ravenhill was uh, 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 talking about the uh, the church being in trouble today. But And, and like he said, it, 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 in the Old Testament, it wasn't the Hittites and the Amalekites and all them heathen people that were the trouble for God. It was... It was it was the nation of Israel that was a trouble. We, the church, were the trouble. The reason God can't work today is because of you and I. We uh, we have no real dedication to the Lord, where His hand of blessing can be upon us, like it was of Elijah. We just saw the end of that little sermon before we started here, uh, and it didn't actually finish it. I wish they would have, but. Uh, uh, we're the we're, we're the problem, and if, if if we can get some people like Elijah of the Bible days and Paul and Peter, uh, James and John, and those that were mighty spirit filled, and historically we have a few today, but not enough. So our 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 problem today isn't the lack of God's power, but it's the lack of us having power. Now David was a man after God's own heart. And uh, if you get you a Bible reading chart, and it's First Samuel today, and it's where Saul is following him, trying to kill him. He was jealous because they had said uh, the singers, uh, as as they would come back from war, uh, the singers were singing, the lady singers were singing, Saul had killed his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So <clears throat> Saul was jealous. Samuel. Uh, Saul went to battle, and uh, he brought back King Agag alive. And he, he, brought back, he brought back spoils from the Lord. He was supposed to annihilate them completely. He was supposed to annihilate them. He didn't. And God said, that's enough. And he sent Samuel to, uh, uh, to Saul, and uh, he said, what is that? What's that cows I hear? Goats bleeding and stuff. And he said, oh, we saved the best for the Lord. And and then he, he spared Agag, the king. Agag thought he had it made now because he wasn't killed right away. But then uh, Samuel says, bring Agag to me, Saul. And Saul uh, uh, called Agag. He presented Agag to Samuel. <clears throat> and Samuel took a sword and chopped him up because it's supposed to defeat everybody. And God said, you tell, you tell Saul you're through. You're not going to be king anymore. Of course, David was a su successor. And right now, in chapters 22, 23, and 24 of 1 Samuel, our reading through the Bible in a year, it shows of David uh, running from Saul. He, as you read today, he could have killed Saul, but he wouldn't because, because the Bible said, touch not God's anointed. And so uh, David would not, he knew he was going to be the king. God already told him that. Samuel told him that. And, uh, but he wouldn't kill him. So let's look at one of these Psalms of David, Psalm 7. He wrote almost all the Psalms, and, and he was mightily used of God to pen down the Scriptures. And we're going to look at Psalm 7. It's just 17 verses, if you'll turn to that. What page is it on in our, <clears throat> in our uh, pew Bibles? Huh? 6.30. 630. <clears throat> 6.30. We use the King James Bible. We believe it's the Word of God in our church. Psalm 7, let's pray, Lord, help us now. Save that sinner nearest hell today. Reclaim a backslider, give Christians higher ground. Anoint this preaching, Lord, anoint your word, the precious word of God this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 
And it says, O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. So the psalmist David says, O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my... What, what do you trust in today? <clears throat> Many people trust in the almighty dollar. In fact, actually, what, what is happening today in, in, in the world we live in, uh, <coughs> money is the king. It's, <coughs> it's all about money. The, the, the people that control the purse strings, the, the people that, that have the money, they're, they're, uh, they're, so, they're, they're the ones that have it. Uh, as far as the world goes, now in God's economy, that's not true. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, so that didn't say money was evil. The love of money, because you have to have money. You have to well, buy food and put a roof over your head and buy clothes and and get a transportation and so on and so forth. And, and so money is a way to, we used to in times of old, way back in time, they bartered. You know, uh, uh, you had a cow and someone had grain and you, you, you'd barter and change it. And uh, that was the system, but now we, uh, we have money. Oh Lord, my God, in Thee will I put my trust. So we're not gonna we're not gonna trust in 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 men. We're not gonna trust in money. We're gonna trust in God, like David did. Uh, save me from all that persecute me, and deliver me. See, you have to look to God. If you're if you're a child of God, you're gonna be hated by the world. If they hated the Savior, they're gonna hate you, and they're gonna hate me. If everybody loves you and hugs your neck, you're not a good Christian. If you're maybe not a Christian at all, I don't know. But we're not, a, you see, uh, if you're the friend of the world, the Bible says, you're the enemy of God. Isn't that something? And the Bible says, if you're the friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, you might get along a little better if you're the friend of the world down here while you live. I went to... Uh, uh, a funeral yesterday of a dear friend of mine and uh, uh, the uh, the man that dies 90 years old and I was there and I knew a majority of the family not the majority but I knew quite a few of the family well for years and and 90 years old uh, uh, you're gonna you, you're gonna get old and 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 you're gonna get and you're gonna die now if the only thing that's important on the, I, I talked to uh, the the lady at the at the dock at Publix when we went to pick up at Publix today we uh, we picked up and and uh, the lady that uh, controls the intake there at uh, at Publix dock where we pick up uh, a bakery uh, she was off yesterday her sister died just 61 years old and and that's a sad thing and and uh, the Bible says appointed unto man wants to die but what I'm saying is well while, while you're on this earth if you cater to the world and you cater to man and, and you want to live that, you might have some advantage for now. But how did, uh, uh, how did it go for the rich man that we preached about yesterday uh, in Luke chapter 16, starting with verse 19? <clears throat> you can look it up. I, I have that, that sermon's on, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, today's Tuesday. That was Sunday. I preached on that Sunday morning. And you can look at our Sunday morning service uh, on, uh, and, and then it, it talked about the rich man that went to hell and the beggar that went to heaven. I'll tell you one thing. I'd rather be a beggar going to heaven than a rich man going to hell, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so here we are. And verse 2, uh, uh, let he, uh, least he tear my soul like a lion, uh, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. So we call for, because the world wants to kill us. The world's against us. The world hates God's people. Verse 3, O Lord my God, uh, if I have done this, if there be iniquity in my heart. So we always have to search our heart. David did that. In fact, David had some real difficulties. You know, David was a man after God's own heart. But he had a tendency, like all of us do, uh, that we can sin. David was overtaken by lust. Lust for sex. That happens a lot with men, you understand. It, it wasn't just to that 
date and time. It's today, just like we heard that preacher from the 1950s. And he was talking about things, and, and he was talking about the United Nations, and he was talking about problems with Russia. We got the same mess today as we had in the 1950s, 50, 60 years later. That's, uh, 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 that's the way it is. So uh, things, uh, uh, things don't change. We're going we're, 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 we're gonna to have that, and uh, uh, it's, 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 it's going to happen. But now, as it says here in the scripture, O Lord my God, uh, I have done this. If there be iniquity uh, in my hand. So what he did, David, and while I was talking about David, he uh, he got into sex sin. Does anybody remember the, the sex sin that he got into? Bathsheba. Now Bathsheba was another man's wife. David was a king. He... Uh, uh, he was up walking up there on the wall and in, uh, uh, in, in the first place. Uh, you know why David uh, got in trouble? He's supposed to be working and he was laying around. <clears throat> it's no good to lay around doing nothing. Idleness is a devil's workshop. Uh, it said uh, when the kings went to war, David stayed back, sent his generals, sent Abner to war. <clears throat> he laid back. There's there's way much too made of leisure time. We say today what America needs now is more leisure time. No, America needs more work. The Bible talks about working from sunrise to sunset. Now that's that's pretty good. Uh, what what was the sun? Did that been. Uh, uh, today, sunrise to sunset will be over 12 hours. I believe uh, it'd be over 12 hours. Sunrise to sunset today will be over 12 hours, and it and it'll get longer <clears throat> up until June. You'll have your longest sunrise to sunset, and then it'll start going back again as uh, as the Earth rotates uh, uh, and those things. But David, who was a man after God's own heart, and David who not only uh, <coughs> was a man after God's own heart, but he wrote a vast portion. He wrote almost all the Psalms, and, and he was highly blessed of God and highly favored. David was, and, uh, and he was picked. He was the youngest son. And Eliab and his big, his, the first brother, Samuel, came to the first brother, big and tall and handsome, and, and, uh, uh, and he said, uh, uh, Surely... This is God's choice. God said, no, that ain't the one. And he went to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. And finally, the last one, he says, ain't none of these. God didn't have his hand on any of them. But then God said, it's on the, it's on the least. Well, there's one more out there. He's David. He's just taking care of the sheep. And so uh, he said, well, go get him. He brought him there, a little teenage boy. And he says, this is the guy. <laughs> and he anointed him, right? He anointed him king of, he was going to be king from then on. Now, as you're reading today, today we're reading chapters 1 Samuel 24, 25, and 26, where, where Saul is, is chasing David, and David will not, he could have killed Saul. They were sleeping, and David stood over him there, and he could have took his javelin, and, and uh, he, he even felt bad. You know, as you read today in, in our Old Testament reading, <laughs> uh, David uh, uh, I guess to uh, to prove that he was there. The, 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 does anybody remember what he did? Does anybody remember what he did? He cut a piece off his robe, off his garment. I thought that's when Saul was in the cave. Yeah, Saul was in the cave. That's what you're going to read today. Yeah, yeah, Saul was in the cave, and 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 David. Abner, there is big tough general sleeping right by him, and all the guards sleeping. David walked in there. <laughs> I mean, if he cut a piece of his garment off, he could have slit his throat. <laughs> this, this, and and uh, uh, David was good at slitting throats. In fact, he was pretty good at cutting heads off, too. <laughs> he cut Goliath's head off. Remember when he cut Goliath's head off? He was a teenage boy. And, and that mighty man of God, little bitty David, uh, he took that sling. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hit him in the head, 
knocked him down unconscious, took his own sword, that mighty sword. In fact, uh, he took Goliath's sword. When, when, when he was running from Saul now, uh, 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 he got uh, and he got some bread from a priest. He got that that whole city of priests got killed. So many priests got killed that, that Saul was got so wicked, and 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 he had so much so much hatred in his heart. But he went there, and and he said that he had to leave quick. He says, "You got any weapons around here?" And he says, "Well, back behind the, they kept it there in the, uh, in the, in the church there. Uh, they kept Saul's." Sword. He said, all the thing got here is Saul's sword. Which you, you knew he knew that sword because he cut Saul's head off with it. And he said, oh, there's none mightier than that. Give me that. So he had Hall, Saul's. In fact, he could have. He could have. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, it wasn't Saul's sword. It was Goliath's sword. Excuse me. It wasn't Saul's sword. But he could have. Uh, he had Saul's sword. He could have cut Saul's. He, he could have cut Saul's head off. With Goliath's sword, and he not only you, you read that scripture. I, I love reading the Bible over and over and over. And this story about David and Goliath, and how David's going to be king, and Saul's chasing him, trying to kill him. He could have cut his head off, but he cut a cut a piece off his garment. And and David said this. Uh, he repented to God. He says, "I'm sorry, God. I I, I should he shouldn't even have cut a diamond, even a piece of his garment off." He could have cut his head off. He could have took his. He could have took a javelin and stabbed it through his heart. But he said, "God said, don't touch the Lord's anointed. You better be careful how you act towards authority. God respects authority. Always remember that. You got to be careful how you talk about the president or the king or the preacher." Or, 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 or the head of the house or you better be careful because God ordains authority and he says in, in the thing of authority he says he puts down one and lifts up another that's what he was doing he was putting Saul down now and, and, and that, that what was going to happen but on the other hand uh, David got into a mess and, and, and like a lot of people get into a mess sexually today a lot of men do especially uh they, they have a, a preponderance to do that and uh, uh, chase after Jezebel. Not even uh, Saul wasn't even chasing after Jezebel. He stole another man's wife and murdered the man. And he paid a heavy price for it. He was a man of war. He had blood on his hands. And, and his, his family was problems and trouble. And, and he paid a heavy price for that. But he wrote this Psalm 7 that we're using today. And he said, if there be any iniquity in my hand, and he knows that, and, and if you want to read, if you want to read uh, David's repentance prayer, the man after God's own heart, read Psalm 51. You ought to read it often. Psalm 51 is good reading uh, uh, for us on a regular basis because we ought to repent. We ought to repent. And I, I encourage people, uh, and, and, and we have that picture as we had uh, yesterday in our reading in the 15th of... Uh, uh, Luke uh, about the, the prodigal son and, and you know he was out there and he spent his money remember in riotous living and and uh, he was uh, he was feeding the pigs and he was eating the husk from the pigs pen. he says man he says are you out there right now are you out in the pig pen do you need to repent and and, and, and come to God maybe someone sitting in our audience here today maybe someone out there you in the pig pen all you got to do is is come back and come towards the heavenly Father, and 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 like the parable of the prodigal son, when when he turned back and repented and went to him, it said the Father did what? He ran to him and hugged him. <laughs> God wants to run to us and hug him, but we've got to repent and turn to him. Saul wouldn't do that, would he? So Saul perished. That's what happened. Uh, so we go on in, in, Psalm, uh, in Psalm 7, verse 4. I have rewarded evil, uh, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yea, I have delivered him uh, that without cause is mine enemy. Let the enemy persecute me, soul, and take it. Uh, what David was saying here, i got to have clean, you and I today, you got to have clean hands. 
I like what Judge Judy says. I love, we, we got, uh, my wife and I, we, we record Judge Judy, and I'm busy, and she's busy, and so I said, honey, we got to get some of this Judge Judy off of there. We got 25 shows recorded. <laughs> so I told you Sunday night after church, I, I'm, I'm, I went home, and, and we watched some Judge Judy, and, and last night, too, I get so tick, sick of this political stuff. And uh, last night, I, I went from the funeral parlor. I had to go to a funeral last night, a, a showing, and, and I got back about 8.30 or so, and, and I said, forget all this news uh, foolishness and it's the same you heard that you heard that you heard that preacher on there from the 1950s he was talking about russia in trouble and and, and the united nations not doing anything it's the same thing today 60 years later <clears throat> nothing changes in the news I and mean, the bible doesn't change either and uh, and so we watch judge judy but one thing judge judy says if if if, if, if someone comes in there and uh they come in there uh, being lying and crooked she throws them out. She says, I ain't going to do nothing for you because you didn't come with clean hands. you got to have clean hands. The only way you can have clean hands is repent and come to God with, and then He'll please you clean your hands. The older brother there, I don't know that parable, that parable of, of the, uh, uh, I, thank God I, I studied the Bible with my grandson, uh, we have the, I like this communications Facebook. We can look at each other, talk to each other, and study the Bible. I like that. It's a blessing. One of the greatest joys of my life is to study the Bible with my grandson. I mean that. And, and we study. And we were talking about uh, the Old Testament. We were talking about David and these things we've been talking about this morning. And then uh, that uh, uh, the uh, parable of the, uh, of, of, of the prodigal son. <clears throat> Let me just tell I don't know. Nathan, you study the Bible a lot, I know. I don't know. I've talked to a lot of preachers. I've read a lot of commentaries. I don't understand. I, I don't have my, I can't grip that. I'll know when I get to heaven. Maybe I'll find out while I'm on this earth yet. I can't figure out the older son. I just, I don't get that yet. He was like a Pharisee. He was mad at his father. He should have been glad his younger son came and got right with God. But he was mad. Uh, 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 he didn't. He, he didn't like it. He was mad, and uh, uh, but then I, I thought, and I, I kind of leaned towards this that he was a Pharisee, and he wasn't saved because he was bragging about how much he did. He, you know, you know, say, I did this, I did that. But then the thing that floors me on this is his daddy said, "Everything I have is yours." Now that got me. <laughs> to this day. I've read the best commentators. I've read. I've read uh, uh, others, uh, but I. It, it hasn't. I'm, maybe I'm just too thick-headed to get it. But the one thing I do get about the uh, about the prodigal son is this, is that when any of us repent and turn to God, He doesn't. Isn't this good? We don't get there and say, well, I wonder what took you so long. Do you realize how nasty, you realize how sorry you are? Did, 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 did the father say that? He ran to him and hugged him. God wants to run to us and hug us. But it's because of our unrepented hearts and our love for sin that he can't. Because our sin and our iniquity keeps God from running to us and hugging us. He wants to. Oh, why don't you why don't you repent today and 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 just take a take a step towards God in repentance and he'll run to you and hug your neck and forgive you and put a new song in your heart, even praise unto him. Let's get on. <laughs> this is so good. Psalm 7, David. And by the way, big time sex offender towards his, one, one of his finest captains. One of his finest captains. Uh, he killed Uriah. He was so faithful. He tried to cover up the pregnancy of Bathsheba by, by calling Uriah back from war so that he could let him go home and it looked like it was Uriah's baby. You, that, that's what he did. That's what he did. 
and, 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 and Uriah come back, he wouldn't go home. <clears throat> he wouldn't go home to his wife. He says, I, I need to be like, like so, uh, David should have been out there leading them men. He had Abner out there doing it. And then, then Uriah, he calls one of his best captains back and, and, uh, and I said, I, I'm not going to go sleep with my wife. I, I need to be out there fighting. What else you need? He's probably wondering. He's probably scratching his head. Why on earth did you call me back here, uh, David? There's a war to be fought. And David wasn't fighting it. Abner was and Uriah was. And, and then, you know, the man after God's own heart, because of sex, listen to this, because of sex, he was so wild about that that he wrote a letter to Abner to put Uriah in the hottest battle. And he would do that because he was one of his finest captains. And he said, put him up there in front and then draw the men back from him. Let him be up there alone. Can you imagine that? David, the man after God's own heart, because of sexual lust, he did that. And you can read it in Psalm 51. In fact, the heading to Psalm 51 in many Bibles, some of them don't list it, but it has a let. It, it says his his repentance uh, uh, because uh, uh, the man of God uh, uh, came to him, and Nathan put his finger in his faith. I think I think it was Nathan that did that. Was it Nathan? Look, look there, at, Nathan. Look, look in Psalm 51. I think it was Nathan the prophet that did it. Uh, Psalm 51, in the introduction to Psalm 51, does it? Yeah, it was Nathan. Nathan the prophet, your namesake. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and, and, and David says, that man will be killed. And, and Nathan, a real prophet of God, stuck his finger in David's face and said, thou art the man. You know what happened to a lot of other prophets that did that? It was the end for them. <laughs> But David repented, and he wrote the 51st Psalm. Time is getting away from us. Let's go on in, in this wonderful psalm that David did write. Uh, verse 6, Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me. Awake, God, to the judgment thou hast commanded. Verse 7, So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, uh, return thou on high. Verse 8. The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness. You see, God has a special blessing upon righteousness. Don't forget, forget that. We live right, He blesses. We backslide, He curses. Watch out. Watch out. You say, you say oh, you, uh, uh, you believe in works. I don't believe in work salvation for a minute. But I tell you what, God's blessing comes from obedience and repentance with Christians too. Yeah, yeah. Verse 8, the Lord uh, shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Verse 9, O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. He's talking about here about righteous living, about godly religion. And like I texted out yesterday, I was kind of hesitant to text it out, but I texted out yesterday some verses from from First John five uh, that says that that if you're saved, you change and you obey the Bible. Uh, um, uh, and 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 here's the statement I put yesterday, and I get questions on it, some from preachers and that. I, I made this statement, a very bold statement. Here's a statement I made yesterday when I texted out. I says. If your life has not changed, you're not saved. That's a pretty strong statement, isn't it? If your life has not changed, you're not saved. Because the Bible continuously over and over in 1 John and in John and all through the Bible, it says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. I didn't say you're perfect, but it ain't the same old mess. It's not the same old shacking up and uh, liquor like a river and on and on and lying and stealing. No. And I, I, I say on the authority of the word, I'm not a work salvation. I believe in, uh, but, but I believe true salvation has a changed life. And I made that statement. I was going to change it. I was going to soften it up. And I was talking to Brad about it when we were riding to make a pickup. And I says, man, that's strong, Brad. And, and, uh, and he says, 
Well, that's what the Bible says. I says, you're right, Brad. I ain't going to change it. I was going to put a couple more softer words in there, like you might not be saved. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, I was going to give a little leeway because some of you might be sitting here. You live like the devil and you think you're saved and nothing ever changed in your life and you lost as Hogan's goat and you're headed for hell. Yeah. Verse 10, my defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. Woohoo! All the way you can be upright in heart is to repent and turn to Christ and be born again. Verse 11, God judges the righteous and God is, is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. Don't you think he hates what goes on up and down? Uh, and, and I saw uh, uh, one of the uh, ladies that was trying to get right with God and, and she was coming to church here for a while and there she is uh, standing on Ridgewood Avenue last night after I'm coming home from the... Uh, funeral parlor and there she's on the turn, uh, corner uh, looking for cars turning tricks again and that's sad you say you got prostitutes come in here yeah I got prostitutes come in here got dope peddlers got all kinds of wicked people like you and I friend <laughs> like you and I <laughs> don't you think uh, just cause you don't uh, just cause you're not a pimp or a whore on the corner don't mean you're any good huh getting quiet in here well you think you're better than pimps and whores ain't none righteous no not one god help you uh, for your uh, uh looking down your nose at folks and you ain't no better the heart of man is desperately wicked who can know it everybody comes the same way i felt so bad i thought that lady she seemed like she was searching for something and coming to church but Don't want to pay the price. Don't want to pay the price. You don't want to repent. The fires of hell wait for that. Verse 14, Behold, he uh, travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood, the wicked man. Oh, my. Verse 15, he made a pit and digged it, and has fallen in the ditch which he made. Man, I've seen that so many times. Uh, wicked people, they'll make a ditch, and they'll try to get someone else, and they fall in it theirself. Huh? Be sure your sin will find you out. You don't get away with nothing. There's no perfect crime. There's no perfect lie. It will catch up with you. It will, it will get you. God sees everything. He knows everything. And every activity you've ever done, every sin you've ever done, it's kept in a book. And thank God, my sins. Did, did you know? <laughs> woo -hoo -hoo! God told me your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. He don't even remember none of them. <laughs> Glory to God. You might come up to me and the devil... Bring some up against me from my past and say, look, you sorry. Look what you did over here and that. Look at there. I got a picture of it. I know. I'm a witness against you. God ain't going to take your testimony. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to have all your sins forgiven and gone? The Bible says if you're truly born again, your sins, your, your past sins, your present sins, and your future sins. You get that, well, you might start living different, amen? Huh? Huh? Awful quiet in church today. Huh? <laughs> Got to finish. Ooh, I'm loving this. Verse 17. I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness. God is righteous. God is holy. God is pure. We can be holy. We can be righteous. We can be pure. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And every sin we've ever done can be cleansed and kept from us through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God. And we'll sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. That's the end of it. Wasn't it a good song? David wrote a lot of psalms, most of them. A man after God's own heart. I preach on them every once in a while. I read them often. I listen today. I must have, I must have listened. Uh, get, we got these smartphones, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a smartphone preaching right now. And... Uh, uh, you can take that. You can take that. I got another smartphone in my pocket here. Another smartphone. And uh, I can put the... It can play for me the Bible. King James Bible. I can listen to it. I listen to it in my car on, on the way over here. 
I, I started with I start with Psalm seven and I listened and by the time I, I can I and I got to, to the mission this morning I listened up to a Psalm thirty four. I went seven and I just listened. I mean I, I, I just I listen to the word of God. I read the word of God. Psalms are good. Well this a good Psalm, Psalm seven. Aren't you glad God is so wonderful? Aren't you glad that when we repent and turn to Him and just take a step towards Him, He runs to us and hugs us? He doesn't condemn us. He doesn't chastise us. And then He says, Your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. I can't go to hell. My sins are forgiven. The devil's the accuser of the brethren. I know many people that are fearful and anxious and, and have troubles and anxiety and care. Tell the devil to go on back to hell. Uh, he ain't got no place on you. Been forgiven. Been washed in the blood. Amen? You can sleep good at night. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because you've repented and you've turned towards God. And when you've turned towards God and repented, He's run to you and hugged you and forgave you. And He says, I'm forgetting all your past sins and your present and your future and you're my child. Are you God's child? I hope so. Lord, thank you. Thank you. David the psalmist, oh, the grievous, terrible sins of adultery and murder and the great penalty it cost him in his, in his life, and in his kingdom and in his family. Is there anyone here in church or on Facebook? You're not saved. You've never repented, been born again. Watch, turn to Christ today. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him today. Call upon him today. I want to pray the sinner's prayer. Repent. Turn to Christ. <laughs> be saved just as if I've never sinned justified just as if I've never sinned I'm sinless in Christ I'm sinless because of his blood <clears throat> I'm perfect in Christ I'm in the family I told someone at the funeral last night she said I'm an orphan Mom and dad died, 90 years old, both of them, just within three weeks. I says, why don't you get adopted? Why don't you get adopted? My Heavenly Father will adopt you into the family of God. She said, not just yet. I hope she does soon. You've got to be adopted into the family of God. God help. Pray the prayer. Take Christ today, dear one. Let us pray. Lord, I believe Christ died for me. I'm going to trust him. I repent. I'm going to be like the prodigal son that we preached on Sunday. I repent. I, I've sinned. I, I'm worthless. I, I, I have no good thing in me. I just turn towards God and he'll run to us. And hug our neck like he did to me April 4th, 1969. Glory to God. Pray this prayer now. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And save me. I hope you've done that today out on YouTube. I hope you've done it today here in church. If you've done it, meant it, it'll be real. And mark the day down. It's your getting saved day. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Facebook, maybe someone out there needs this sermon today. Uh, you forward it to them. Uh, we're going to have uh, a meal here together. And, and uh, God being our helper, we'll, uh, uh, we'll be on tomorrow at the same, same time. I'm going to get this shut off. Voicemail come up here. These crazy, these phones are way too smart. It says finish. I guess I'm still on here. Bye.